Well, Brian, bugs are pretty easy, weeds are pretty easy, because you can see them out in the field. Yep. Then you can go out and wipe them out. If you've got a disease in your crop, if you see it, you're too late. The treatment options we have just aren't that good to completely wipe something out and cure it. Well, you know, Darren, if we had the bright sun like we do now that's blinding me all the time, we probably wouldn't have that much problem with disease. The big thing with disease is if you've got cloudy and cool conditions, if you have a tight canopy, if you have more moisture held in there, that's where you're more likely to get disease problems. Well, that moisture seems to be a big factor. The other thing that happens a lot is if you have a crop that's not healthy for one reason or another. You've right. got some soil conditions that aren't really conducive to good plant growth, or you've got a nutrient that's missing, yep. and now that plant is weak. It's much like a human when you think about it. If we haven't gotten much sleep or we aren't eating right, that's about the time we get sick. It's the same thing with our plants. Yeah, absolutely. So what farmers will do is protect the seed to begin with, with a fungicide. But then the thing we wanted to get to today is, are you spraying a fungicide post-emerge on your crop? And if you're not, it's something that we want you to consider because there are diseases in virtually every crop out there. And not always is it gonna be bad enough that you need to spray a fungicide, but you need to understand how fungicides actually work in plants. One of the most important things is they move, most all fungicides move in the xylem of the plant. There are two transport systems for water nutrients in the plant. They are the xylem, which only moves upward, and the phloem, which moves down and also up. Since the fungicides only move in the xylem, which only moves up, if you don't spray the bottom leaves on your crop, those leaves are gonna be completely unprotected. Fungicides do not move very well in the plant. They don't move down in the plant. So you have to have great spray coverage. And that's the most important thing you need to understand about fungicides. Well, okay, and you say, well, when am I gonna have time to do this? I've got all these other things I've gotta do out in my fields. You know, the good thing with fungicides is they can be tank mixed with other operations. So you say, well, I'm gonna go out there in wheat, for example, and I've gotta spray some broadleaf weeds out of my wheat. You can mix a fungicide fungicide in with pretty much yep. anything you'd be spraying for broadleaf. You can. Okay, and specifically in terms of which fungicide would you recommend on soybeans? Well, I like Domark for white mold protection. Headline is an awful good fungicide. There's okay, other wait, products, let's, yeah, let's, Eagle Yield, Quilt Excel, yeah. that, are, that are nice products too, that have two modes of action. I think there's some huge benefit in having a couple different modes of action to prevent any resistance issues. Okay, yeah, let's split that out. We've got products that contain strobal urines, and we talk about the plant health benefits. Some people are big believers in that others are not but anyway that's the headline quadris veto that family you could do combination products that contain strobel urine like quilt excel or stratego yield the straight triazole family domark that's going to be a little bit better on white mold so if you had a white mold issue and you wanted to spray it let's say r1 go with domark and then follow up maybe possibly again with domark at r2 or r3 more again for white mold otherwise you could go over to that other family okay let's talk about specifically in corn what are the two best timings in corn i could spray a fungicide well in corn and there's a lot of work being done around the V5 stage or five collar corn, which you know we're in three collar corn right now, so we're getting pretty close to that stage. So the corn's going to be fairly small, maybe it's going to be six to ten inches tall around that time period. And there is a lot of yield being determined at that early stage where we're determining the size of that ear already. And now obviously, we haven't gotten kernels on there and we haven't. Uh, pollinated them and all these kind of things. So that's the other critical stage. Once we get past tassel, when our crop is fully tasseled and we're starting to silk, that's gonna be the best time where we've seen good results using a fungicide. However, it all comes down to moisture and what you've got for disease and yeah. the different hybrid tolerances okay. to certain okay, diseases. So, so yep. there, there's a lot of various all right. factors. All right, so V5 and R1 in corn, and there we're talking headline, quilt, Stratego, any of those types of products, any of those family. I mean, there are a bunch of different fungicides that are available, and there are a lot of them that are quite effective. Okay, wheat, real quickly, the best three timings in wheat. In wheat, we look at herbicide timing early, then we look at flag leaf is very important. And then when that head comes out, if you're in an area that has head scab or stripe rust, we want to make sure we have some protection. The main thing you need to know there is at heading, you cannot use a strobal urine product. It has to be a triazole. Well, when it comes to fighting disease in your crops, it can be a little difficult and you do have to treat ahead of time. Fortunately, with weeds like our Weed of the Week, when you see them out there, there are products that can wipe them out. We'll share that coming up next.